Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about blocking your low legs uh, with a sword and shield. Okay, so the conventional wisdom with the short sword and shield is the way you block your low legs is you maintain distance. Okay, so from this position here, I can attack the head, I can attack the hips, I cannot attack the legs, right? So the, the reason is because the distance going across is shorter than the distance diagonally. Okay, so that's that's the conventional wisdom that a lot of people have used uh, in sword fighting uh, as far as blocking the low legs. However, I've never really been satisfied with that. Uh, the reason is because in a realistic type of fighting situation, you know what, it might be my position, it might be my job to hold this spot right here. And meanwhile, it might be my opponent's job to charge, uh, run me over and occupy the space that I'm holding, okay? so. Uh, in, in that case, we're going to get pretty close to each other, okay? I can't depend on uh, distance to block my low legs. Uh, the other thing, on the, on the real battlefield, the weapons are not matched. So, uh, one person might have a shield, the other person might have a pole arm that has more reach. So, with a pole arm like this, you can stand from, at, from a little further out, attack the low legs, block the head like this, all right? Um, so now, you know, if that person has a shield, um, you know, they cannot depend on, on that distance for their low leg uh, defense, okay? So there has to be some other option other than uh, maintaining distance, okay? Put this down. So, so I've been fighting for about 16 years competitively. Uh, and this is the type of shield that I have used, you know, widely known as a, as a heater shield. And this is the type of strapping uh, that I've used for those 16 years most, okay? So this, this type of strapping has the advantage of really good head defense, right? So I'm using this corner to block my head. I'm using that corner there to block my legs up to about the knee, okay? So the problem here is that I really can't get any lower than that. Now, if I try to lower my arm, you see how that corner flips back? All right, so now I've actually, I'm actually blocking less leg by, by lowering my arm, okay? So, so that's the uh, disadvantage of this, but it does have the advantage of really good, really strong head defense, uh, and you can defend your legs up until about your knee. Uh, but I started, you know, I started fighting with a group that really likes targeting the low legs, and I, I realized that this is, is really not going to work for me. So I started looking for a solution. So let me put this down for a second. Um, I saw a, an image of a historical heater shield that has this additional strapping over here. So this strapping allows you to hold the shield like this with your arm in the down position. Right? And I, you guys see how I can actually bring that tip almost down to the middle of my shin. Okay, so from this position here, you can see it only goes to the top of the knee. That's as low as I can, you know, if I lower my arm, it doesn't help. But from this position here, I can I can stick that corner down. I can actually stick it out like this. And I, I'm really, you know, I, I actually have that low leg defense. Um, that was working really good. So I decided to pressure test this. I, I took this to a practice where they were using a sword like this, okay? So this is a rapier type sword or a cut and thrust type of sword. If you notice the tip uh, is very tapered, right? So it's a quick blade, but it doesn't have a whole lot of mass on the blade, right? Um, so what I found is that I didn't have any trouble blocking this type of a sword. So when people were hitting this, okay, I could block that, I could block the low legs, no trouble. Now, now this type of a sword, because it's tapered, it doesn't quite hit as hard as a, a medieval type of sword, okay? So if you see this sword, okay, as I, you know, you know, that's about as hard as it will hit. Let me hit the wood up there, right? So, right, that's as hard as, it, I mean, it still bites into the wood a little bit, but that's as hard as this type of a sword will go. But then I went to a different practice where uh, they're actually calibrated for male armor, okay? Because in that practice, they were calibrated completely unarmored, okay? So if you're unarmored, the hits don't need to be really hard in order to, uh, to hurt you, uh, but if you're calibrated for male, you know, which is a, a, a series of, of, um, of, of links, of metal links, uh, now you have to use like a, a percussive fighting style. 
So the, the type of sword that you would use uh, in, in that period, right, in the period of male, looked more like this. And as you can see, this has more, you know, it, you know, it, it has more mass on the blade. You know, this is going to hit a lot harder, right? Okay. So this is a much more harder hitting sword. Um, and, uh, and by the way, the type of sword that we use in that practice is something like this. This ha this is a wooden rattan, right? Let's compare these two swords for a second. So this sword over here, push you out a little bit. So this this sword over here. Uh, weighs somewhere between two and a half and three pounds. I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere about there. And it has a pummel over here that acts as a counterweight, balances around about there. And that that pummel that you know that's what allows me to rotate the sword over from one side to the other. It's basically rotating on that balance point over here. Okay. So this simulator over here, which is has a, a hard wooden core, it's basically a baseball bat. Um, it has a hard wooden core. It has a steel basket over here, which serves two functions. It protects my hand, but it also acts as a counterweight. Okay, so the sword balances right about there. And again, this allows me to rotate the sword. Okay, right? It has that rotation where I can come over, flip it that way, flip it that way, you know, come back, throw it there. So, so, so both of these swords move in a similar way, and they hit about as with about the same power, okay? They, they hit hard. So when I went to a practice where we were using this sword, and I used this shield and this strapping, the problem that I had is when people were hitting me that this corner would want to flip over. And what happens a lot of times, the sword would come in, knock the shield over, skip up, hit me in the head, uh, and, you know, if there was sufficient force, it was a good killing shot, okay? Um, so I had a hard time uh, protecting my head with that corner. I ended up doing a lot of doubling up, sword blocking, right? So I was dependent on the sword for my, my head defense, um, which I didn't, I didn't like it so much because I, I prefer that I had the option of using my shield 100% for defense and my sword for 100% offense, okay? Um, if, if I have a weak corner over here, right, that wants to flip over, all right, you know, now I need to use my sword to head block. Well, if I'm blocking with the sword, I'm not attacking, okay? Um, so what, I said, you know what, let's, let's try something different. So the problem with this was I couldn't bring it down low enough. I said, hey, let's try putting the arm more horizontally across the top and see what angle that gives us, okay? Then I went to this strapping here, where now instead of the strapping being at the 45 degree, degree angle, it, it's more horizontal to the top. And this did have the benefit of, look how low I can bring that tip, right? So I can lower my arms, I can bring that tip down to the, to the middle of my shin, bring the corner up, block my head, seemed to solve the issue, right? It, I had strong defense up here. Uh, the problem that I ran into is that this is extremely tiring, right? So with the other strapping, let me get the other shield. So with this type of a strapping, there's about eight inches between my fist and that corner. So I can hold my fist, like in this position here, rested. There's a pretty rested position. That corner basically covers my head. And if I want to get higher, all I got to do is just shrug my shoulders up a little bit, Okay. So I have the benefit of being able to really cover my head good with very minimal motion. The only problem is I can't cover my lower head because when I lower my arm, that tip rotates back. So with this strapping here, okay, the problem was that because my hands are now, my, my hands are only about four inches from that corner, I gotta basically stay in this position up here with my hand basically above my shoulder, which is extremely tiring, okay? So I did this for a couple of uh, practice sessions. I ended up not liking it. I'm like, you know what, there has to be a better solution. Um, another thing I didn't quite love is because your hand is so high up here, this corner over here, I mean, it, 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 did, it was a bit, you know, flimsy. It would flop around a bit. Now you can brace this up against your leg. But the main thing was that I didn't like the fact that I had to fight 
with my hands so high up. Uh, it was a bit unnatural to me. That's, you know, it is, I've been fighting a certain way for so long. I didn't want to completely change my style. So I came up with something different. I said, Let, let's try a rectangular shield, right? So we've got a rectangular shield over here. Right, and with this, I, I basically I strapped this like a traditional heater. So my hand is basically at that 45 degree angle, right? It's about eight inches from the corner. So I can hold my fists here in a rested position, right? Right by my chest. And that corner is almost covering me to my head over here. And I, all I got to do is shrug my shoulder up a little bit and I can get it up another like three or four inches, okay? Uh, now, as far as the leg defense, right? So from this position here, I've got that corner that blocks me up to my knee, but then if I lower my arm, it comes halfway down my shin. All right, so from there, right, I'm blocked up to the knee, then I can rotate my arm down, that blocks me halfway up the shin, and that also gives me some good, a decent amount of head defense here, where now all I gotta do is just shrug my head up, back up a little bit more in case you guys can't see me. So there I'm blocked up to the knee, I got really strong head defense, and then just by rotating it, I get a lot lower, on the on you know on the low leg and i still that got that corner over there um so nice thing is with this type of a strapping this is very similar to the strapping that i the, the, the style of fighting that i've been doing for about 16 years so it, it's a very little there's very little change that's that's happening here for me um so that's why and, and this is working I, i'm going to post a video uh where i'm fighting with this rectangular shield um and you're going to see me fighting a lot like this you're gonna see me fighting a lot like this, right? Well, I'm using that corner to block my head, that corner to block my my leg, right? Now, here's the thing. Um, there's always a cost and benefit to everything. Let me go back to the heater for a second. So with this with this type of with this strapping over here, one of the things that I would do is you see this curve over here. I would use that to attack the leg, all right? Attack the leg, attack the head, okay? So, you know, this kind of bowed out to protect my, my, my mid area over here. So that was really, really convenient, right? All right? I could just follow that line in over there, follow that line over there. When I went over to the rectangular shield, so in that same position, okay, now, that corner is in my way, okay? So I can't quite make that same shot, but the nice thing is that I can rotate the corner, so I got that block in my head, block the leg, block the, you know, hit the, I'm sorry, attack the leg, attack the head, okay? Um, so this added a whole different dimension to the fighting. Um, let's talk about that for a minute. So with this, with this shield over here, there's only one way to really hold this when it's strapped like this. That corner has to block your head. That corner has to block your leg, right? And there's going to be very minimal movement with this with this shield. So because I'm holding the shield like this, you know that this, if you want to attack me, this is the angle that you're going to attack me in, right? Because you're going to, you're going to match your blade to the angles of my shield, right? If I'm holding my corner here, you can't come in horizontal. Because that's going to, you know, so if I'm like this, you can come in horizontal, right? But if I go like this, now you got to match your blade to my edges, okay? So with this type of a shield, I'm always going to be here. The most I might switch to this, but this is, there's, there's very minimal movement with this. Uh, and my opponent knows what angles they, they pretty much have to match. Let's go to the rectangle. So with this shield over here, I've got this corner over here blocking my head. So here you know you got to match that corner and that corner, that corner. But look what happens if I rotate to that corner. Now you got a corner here. So whereas here you can come straight in, if I rotate, all of a sudden you get hit corner. So you have to constantly adjust to match my rotation. Okay. So with that shield over there, I'm not going to be rotating it a whole lot because I don't I don't get a benefit out of this. Whereas with this. You know, I get a benefit from rotating it, and uh, what happens is 
with that shield, you've got basically three corners that you're working with. With this one, you've got four, right? You've got four corners that I have to block with. But because this shield can be here or here and, 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 and be just as valid in defense in either position, you really got eight corners that you're working with, right? So you've got these four corners in this position. You've got these four corners in that position. Um, so there's, there's, there's eight corners that you got to deal with uh, if you're fighting somebody that has a rectangular shield like this. And, and I don't want to, I, mean, I, I realize that it seems very similar to a, a, a scutum, a Roman scutum. However, they were center gripped. So I, I, I don't want to call it a scutum. Uh, it, it can, it seems somewhat similar to a tower shield or pavis. But again, here's the thing. Um, shield shapes and designs, I mean, they did vary, okay? People historically tried every possible shape and design. Um, and if you look on the Bayou Tapestry, you see a lot of kite shields, right? But here's the thing, the, kite, the uh, some of the kite shields shown on the Bayou Tapestry had a center boss, right? They had that disc here in the middle. So the purpose of that disc is so that you can put your hand in there and grip it and, and you know, so that you can center grip the shield. However, we can see on the Bayou Tapestry that a lot of the shields that, despite having a boss over here, they're strapped like this. So they're not making use of the boss. Uh, the boss is pretty much there. It's kind of a holdover from an earlier period. So it's kind of anachronistic, okay? Um, so people went back and forth. They experimented with shields. You know, they, they used whatever worked for them, okay? Uh, so right now, this is working for me, okay? So this is what I'm going to go with. <laughs> um, and like I said, it's, 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 it's solving all the problems that I've had where, it, I, you know, I'm able to maintain that strong head defense, right? Uh, it's, my arm is still low enough, so I have good strength down here. I can rotate it to block. I can rotate this to get low and block my low leg. I'll back up a little bit more. So if I'm fighting here like this, see, I, I can block myself like that. So, so this is working. So now here's the thing. There's a cost and a benefit to everything, okay? Uh, obviously, with this shield, I'm getting a lot more defense. Uh, what's the cost? The cost is an extra pound in weight, okay? Uh, those triangle shields over where, over there weigh nine and a half pounds. This one weighs ten and a half pounds, right? Because you've got the extra metal of these corners over here, right? So there's an extra pound over here, uh, which does add up. So let's talk a little bit about the weight of a shield and how it affects your fighting. Uh, let me... So if I'm fighting with a really small shield like this, right, uh, you know, this is a shield that I want about, because it's light, I can afford to be very mobile, right, I can move with this. Uh, the other thing is, I'm going to hold this at extension, right, so if you see I'm holding this shield out, I'm not holding it in. The reason why I'm doing that is, as I'm holding it here, you can see, look how much of my body you can see here, as I come out. You see how now you can see a lot less of my body as i come back in you see more all right so simply by punching this out right i get a lot more defense from the smaller shield all right so this is a shield because it's smaller i want to fight it out okay and keep it extended for as long as possible now obviously if i'm out of range i'm going to rest i'm going to bring it in and then as i come out i'm going to i'm going to extend to get my you know to get as much defense out of this little thing as possible. So when I go to the heater shield, which is bigger than this, so with, with the heater shield, now this is heavier. So with this, I want to use minimal movement, right? Because it's heavier, it's going to tire me out. So with this, I'm usually punching up. It's, it's usually four inches to the right, four inches to the left. Occasionally, I will reach out a little bit with this to cut an angle. So, so I might do something like that. Right, so I might, I might extend this a little bit, okay, but not often and not too much uh, because it's heavier and it's going to tire me out. Now with the rectangle shield, because now we're a pound heavier, right, now we're at 10 and a half pounds, I want to do even less movement, okay, so with this, my movement is simply going to be this, punch up, punch left, punch right, and a rotation. I'm, I'm not going to do any extend with this, all right? So everything, you know, the shield stays close to my body because otherwise, and it just rotates like this, all right? All right? So, I'm, you know, if I want to attack the leg, I'll rotate it in like this. Attack that angle. Attack that angle over there. I, I want to move this as, as little as possible so it doesn't tire me out. Um, 
what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna attach a video uh, from one of my uh, one of my recent practices, uh, and this is a free practice open to all. So if you're in Central PA, uh, you can you know contact me and you come out and check us out. Maybe you want to join us. Um, so yeah, check it out. Drop some comments below. Let me know how you like it. Uh, now this video is going to be posted in the place where it's going to be more than just short people looking at this. So you know, um, there's a there's a you know there's, here's the thing. Fighting is fighting. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're gun fighting, knife fighting, sword fighting. Uh, the the root term in all that is fighting. Okay, um, so you know it doesn't matter if you're paintballing. You know, if you're if you're if you're fighting it in a realistic style, and you're fighting it as a martial art, um, you're going to get a benefit, a real fighting benefit out of it. And what makes a martial art a martial art? Well, uh, martial, of course, being the art of Mars, which is the the, the god of war. Um, the thing that makes a martial art a martial art is attacking in a defensive manner. Okay, so um, if you're just blindly charging, right, which is a tactic that has been used historically in many situations but if you're if you're just blindly charging without regards for your own life or your safety uh, that's not a martial art a martial art is where you want to uh safely attack the other person so re regardless of whether you're training to let's say shoot from behind cover you know or, or move and shoot you know if, if, if there's if there's planning that goes into it so that you can preserve your life and and, and be combat effective that's a martial art. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the tools are. Doesn't matter if we're working with swords, working with knives, working with guns. None of that matters. Working with laser guns in the future. No, none of that matters. Um, that's what makes a martial art martial art. You know, uh, developing uh, styles and uh, work, developing techniques and strategies and tactics so that you can attack in a defensive manner uh, and preserve your life while you know while effectively attacking uh, your opponent. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Drop some comments below. And if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Uh, you can find me on Odyssey. I have a uh, channel set up over there called Pocono Tactical that's not censored. Uh, so that's a good place to find me. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube on the Safa, Pocono Shooting, and Absolute Gun Rights. I'll talk to you all soon. Oh, the legal zone and the rest. Oh. Right. That's why you should go to Demion. Demi Sotcats. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to